Hi there, today I received this massive box from eBay. Uh, so let's see what's inside and see what it can do. Yes, it's a microwave counter. It has three inputs. The first one is a normal frequency counter that goes from 10 Hz to 100 MHz. The second band is from 10 MHz to 1 GHz. This is a 15 ohm uh, input impedance. And the last one, the band 3, is from uh, 1 GHz to 18 GHz. So let's remove all the warranty white stickers. And let's open it up and have a look inside. And there we go. Wow, this is really unexpected. This is fully populated. I didn't expect it to have some of those additional features. Okay, so if we go through all the features one by one, we have obviously uh, here the power supply. There's a huge rectifier here and uh, a lot of uh, capacitors. The next board is a GPIB board, which is an option actually. So I'm, uh, I'm quite lucky that that is included. There are a couple of little thumb screws down here, so this is uh, set to address 19. The next board in the stack is a reference loop and a DAC. The next one again is a phase lock. I will go into more detail about the phase lock on this uh, frequency counter because this is a very special feature for this one. Uh, the next one is a microcontroller. I'm going to remove the board later to see whether some of the uh, EEPROMs for the options that I need are included. Next is the actual counter card, then there's a gate generator and a, a special converter board for band number 3. Um, that is the high frequency, the gigahertz stuff. And finally there's a converter board for band number 2. Down here you can see the gigahertz stuff. There's some kind of oscillator or whatever down here and then um, a converter assembly. Uh, so, let's get, get it powered on and see what it can do. Yes, power is on. Uh, the fan is quite noisy, but uh, when the lid is uh, on, it's probably okay. So, the first thing I want to do is uh, run some self-test. This uh, machine has uh, three or four self-tests. Um, if you press test, zero, one, one, yes. It will check the internal clock and it says uh, 200 megahertz right there. So that looks pretty good. Um, so far so good. Test 02. This is uh, obviously a display test. And test 03. Yeah, maybe another display test. Uh, and test 04, was it? Another display test. Okay, let's stop all this testing and let's try uh, clear. And uh, what I really want to know is uh, whether it has a power level meter built in. Because if that's the case, I'm uh, really, really uh, happy. I have some specific use for this machine, and I will talk about that in another video. Uh, but it's important that the power meter is working. So let's try that. Oh, uh, oops. Error 13. So obviously the power meter is not working. The other thing that should not be working on this model is uh, band 2. 
uh, I only need it for the 1 GHz to, to 18 GHz band, so band 2 is not working, uh, and that's why I got it so cheap. Uh, I have checked the schematic, there's a service manual available online, and um, basically the power meter is just um, a DAC and a converter. So uh, I should be able to implement that maybe on a separate little daughter card or something. Um, but otherwise the power meter card is uh, completely uh, identical to the 200, uh, 200 MHz counter card. The only difference is that little uh, DAC. So hopefully they've been using the same PCB and I can just plug in the DAC and that's that and that's it. Okay, I have here my uh, stabby lock. So I set this up to 100 MHz. If we take a look at my um, new uh, microwave counter, it shows uh, 99.999928 MHz. So this is uh, definitely within the spec. Let's try uh, 20 MHz. Boom! Unfortunately, they were right. Uh, band 2 doesn't work. Let's swap the probe to band 2. Uh, get it out of here, plug it into band 2. Set it to band 2. There we go. And uh, band 2 is not working. Um, I'll have to, to look at that. Um, but okay, let's, uh, let's take out some of the cards and see what's inside. The board that I'm most interested in is the band 2 converter. So let's take uh, and get that out of the box here. Uh, there's a funny little clip, a ground clip, which can be removed very easily. And then you should be able to just pull the board out here. Yes, and we got it out. Uh, there's a massive bodge down here. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, I should be able to get that working. The next one is the gate generator. This is where the power is measured, if the chip is available. Um, so let's get that out and check if... Oops, it's a little cable here. Are all the chips populated? Yes, but what do you know? Look up here, there's a chip missing. So, to convert this board to uh, power measurement, it's just populating this DAC here and uh, a couple of other resistors. This is the board that I'm uh, really interested in. Uh, it consists of three things. Uh, the first thing in the middle here is the interface to the main CPU. The main CPU is on another board. Um, and this is basically just the address and data bus from a Motorola 6809 that controls everything here. So this is a par parallel port chip. Uh, on the left here we have a temperature controlled oscillator and we have uh, some uh, logic uh, gates. Um, I heard that these are ECL, um, but from what I can see here it says uh, 74 LS, so it's just normal TTL level uh, ICs, which makes uh, my life a little bit easier. Uh, on the right side there are some analog stuff, there are a lot of DACs, and uh, I will go into detail about what they do uh, later on. But otherwise, um, it should be pretty straightforward to upgrade this board from the basic counter module to the one that can also um, uh, measure the, the power levels. If you look at the schematic you just need to add a DAC, uh, some uh, logic uh, for the bus interface and an EEPROM here with a new code for the power meter. So uh, since everything is available online I will try to do that um, but that will be in another video. So this is the processor board. I'm really lucky that EEPROM 02B uh, is installed over here because that is the one for the um, level uh, measurement. Uh, I can see that someone has been inside and tried to do something here because um, these EEPROMs are without the label. Um, and also the labels on the other EEPROMs are just a paper sticker. Uh, this is really unfortunate because light can get in through paper. So I'll have to um, fix that as well. So that's it. I'll be doing a repair video, so check back soon.